of time. Yes, so I'm with Ruben Hassan, I'm the head of sales here at Thermal within Planner. And I'm going to talk about small, scalable, and standardized solutions. And I hope it's not going to be too much uh, the propaganda. Let me know if I should. <laughs> Good. Okay, so just to give you an introduction at least of what Planner is, we're quite new in the market, so. Many of you may not know that much about us. Thamon was founded in 2011 by Thomas Öström and Joachim Kim Kautar, sir. We are fully based in Stockholm, Sweden. We now have a small branch office in Japan to support the business over there. We went public, public in October last year, almost right, exactly a year ago. And uh, we have also the production based in Sweden where we today can produce up to about 400 units a year, and then uh, we can easily expand that to over 2,000 units a year. So that's, and right now we are about 70 people in the company. Uh, and this picture is just from the uh, new power plant going, soon going online on Iceland, outside Fluger. So then, where are we now? I'm just gonna give you a quick recap of our how far we've come in the geothermal market and other markets so far. We've, uh, we started off in the maritime and the industrial sector, uh, taking care of waste heat from steel production and in the maritime, with jet sets uh, on board the uh, big cruise ships. And uh, so we have uh, orders with Merlin Voyages, we have the orders with Merit, so it both cruise and container. Uh, and now in the last two years, also started our focus within GSM, although we see a big value of this distributed small scale system. So and in this in within GSL, I'm going to go more into detail of some of the cases that we have all the Germany, Canada, Iceland and now also Japan. So what are we talking about here when it comes to the actual solution? Uh, so Clamon is one standardized module. We only have one product, and that's our 150 kilowatt module, which can then be expanded up to about, I would say it's reasonable to look at projects up to about three megawatt. I like to see this as a wellhead generating solution. And we are fully focused on temperatures below 120C, even if we would of course also look at resources somewhat hotter than that, but our technology is such as optimize the focus on the low temperature area. But we see that large potential, uh, most resources accessible, and no one has really looked in and had a broader market acceptance in that kind of temperature range. We believe that we can. Then. So, let's have a look at the module as such. The module as such is just two times new two meter, and that includes the full cycle, uh, the full binary cycle. And the interesting thing with it, and where it's different from a traditional ORC, is that we're going to vacuum. In the condenser, we are down in vacuum, and on the pressure side, we only are at two and a half absolute bar, 35 PSI. But since we are in vacuum on the condenser side, we still get a very good pressure ratio of our turbine. And what we're also using is that we've been able to scale down what you normally only see in big steam-based power plants, the direct contact condensing solution. We've been able to scale that and integrate that into a binary cycle according to our ORC cycle. And what we're also using that is a bit special is another kind of working fluid that's not been used for power production before, which has almost no global warming potential, it's like a global warming potential of one, and it's not toxic. Very, uh, very easily available. You can source it locally and very cheap in comparison with a traditional refrigerant. And also, since it's a vacuum based system, you have almost no loss. You don't need to refill it every year or anything like that. So, and all this together helps us to reach an efficiency of about 50% of kernel. And it also means we can keep the internal pressure to be really low. It's only about 5 kilowatts of a 150 kilowatt net unit. And these modules can be placed in serial and in parallel, and I'm going to talk more detail about value that. And we 
try to do it as plug and play as possible uh, by testing all the units before they leave the manufacturing facility so we can just uh, compare the site in parallel as we produce our units and then as the site is ready we can place the units and have a just a short, very short commissioning time. So and each unit as such is designed to only take a bite of 10 degree. If you have the nominal flow of 30 liters per second in, in the unit, you will only take a bite of 10 degrees if you flow 30 liters per second. And then you say that you have some resource, you want to neutralize a very large delta C. So why do you only take a 10 degree bite? The more stages that you can uh, slice your delta T up in, the higher efficient, overall efficiency of that delta T you can get because it's always uh, governed by your boiling point. So what we've done is that we created a solution where you place the modules in serial and in parallel and it gives you extremely flexible solution to adapt to the, to the uh, well uh, specifications that you have. And those well specifications will also change maybe over time. So you also have the flexibility to adapt later on if you have lower flow, or you see that I can stress my resource a little bit harder, so you can add a flow, add a larger pump, and just add additional modules. And uh, it, what it also gives you an opportunity to also be very flexible if you combine this with district heating or greenhouses. So let's say if you, just a quick example, let's say you have a, you're drilling your resources, you believe that you're going to get 60 liters a second at 100 degree, and you add two parallel flows, dividing it from 30 liters in each flow, and you place, let's say, here you have a heat consumer that needs 80 degrees, so you only have, you only utilize it down to 80 degrees. You have three modules in two parallel flows. But then you see that you can increase your flow, but then you just add another parallel flow to that, and you can expand your power flow. You don't need to buy a totally new one. This also means that you can keep the value in your power flow much longer time. And this all together also, some of the quick values of this is the enhanced efficiency that this gives you that I talked about. It also gives you cost efficient redundancy since you can, if you have 10 modules working together, turning off one module will only actually not take away the tens of your production, it will only take away 5% or so. Because if you have placed the modules in a serial configuration like this, this one is not utilized 100%. But if you turn off the first module in the stage that have 100 degrees, these 100 degrees are instead going to the next module, then will get 100 degrees instead of 90, and this one will get 90, and so on. So you're only losing the performance of the last module in the stage itself. And also, it's cost efficient redundancy in a way also that you can have a spare turbine in storage at the site. So even if you have a turbine maybe you can be up and running in a few hours again. And the cost for that spare turbine if you have 10 modules <coughs> is extremely small for your whole installed system. So you're also optimizing your the cost for for having a very very high uptime. And also you have an adaptive control system, all these modules talking together really adapt so each module gets the right amount of running hours. Um, so yes, and as I said, we look at this as a wellhead generating solution. And from a project development perspective, this gives you the opportunity to use the cash flow from the first globalist that you develop to help you use that cash flow to, for the expansion of your project. And this helps you to optimize your equity need in the projects. And sorry, Alexander, that I'm maybe stealing a bit of the <laughs> <laughs> concepts in one way. But I think this is a really important solution for, it, for the development of these small scale geothermal power plants and also to make it more interesting for investors that normally only look into solar and wind because for them it's all about minimizing the risk 
And I believe in a concept like this where you prove the resource with a smaller plan, plan but one goblet, learn from that about how the resource is behaving and then expand from it. Can be uh, a big benefit. So, what have we then been doing in the market so far? On Iceland, we uh, started a discussion about a year ago in June 2017, together with a, then it wasn't Barn Orca, then it was three guys who had a good idea on looking for, at that time it didn't look like a good idea. Iceland has extremely low electricity prices. They have so much large ADU thermal and hydro developed in the country. <coughs> So going in there, where they have all this knowledge about large scale geothermal high te temperature solution, why would you look at small scale geothermal there? But there we saw that there were some big values. Hydro projects on the, on the, in the Iceland is new hydro projects to support the coming demand for electricity. It doesn't seem to be happening. And there's no really large geothermal new power plants of the type that I see that would be going online in the coming five or ten years. So a small-scale distributed power system on Iceland is something that uh, really could uh, add power production quickly and support also the local community in a way. So uh, we also see that they value that the power is consumed locally and not put on a big transmission grid. That means that they can actually get that adds a benefit that lower the electricity price for the consumers. So, uh, together with Barman Orca, we signed a deal with 197 modules to be placed at more than 20 different locations, all scaling from 300 kilowatts up to a couple of megawatts. And uh, in combination, quite many times, with the heating solutions. Uh, and the first power plant is now going soon, in the coming month, going online. So, just to give you a little bit. So yeah, in August 2007, we started to work together with a team that is now called Barma Orca. And in just a little bit more than a year, Barma Orca, the company, has been founded and financed. And in December 2017, we looked at all the different possibilities for which pilot site that would be optimal. And then in May 2018, summer of May, April, and so we started site preparations. And that was together with the team from Etland. And uh, June, we had a groundbreaking ceremony, and now we're just starting the commissioning of that plant. So in just a little bit more than a year, we've been able to put a new geothermal power production in place. Nice. And one important part of this also is that Climate is the supplier of the equipment, but the other component that has also been very important for us is base load capital. Base load capital is the financing link or so uh, that is combined together with climate. And many of the owners behind base load capital are also owners in climate. Uh, and base load capital, uh, gives us the opportunity to get access to uh, early stage financing of the project. It helps us to get going, to get the initial financing to put the first power plant in place, and then we can uh, go talking with the bigger bank, the banks who still not really are up to understand all the details of geothermal. Based on capital helps to bridge that gap and to get the ball rolling early. And now, just to give you a little bit of example of how the structure looks then with the final base of capital goes in the financing pocket. So let's say we have a heat power operator, Barn Orca or Japan or so, uh, which see that they are able to get a long term TPA to support their project. Then, at an early stage, base load goes in. Uh, with equity to support this heat power operator, or there may also be a local equity sponsor that will support it, together with base load. 
And then, as you get the first project up and running, you can then add different kind of financial setups. In Sweden, we have the opportunity to work together with the Swedish Export Credit Board and the Swedish Export Credit Agency, which can help us to, together with local banks or with Swedish bank, structure the deal so we can also get a credit insurance combined with the project. Or we also now have the possibility uh, that through base load get structured financing to help support the, the further development or the implement of the development of the project. And this helps us to access really low cost capital because you can de risk a lot of the project in the, in the first initial phase. So and here we have the first power plant on, on Iceland, which is proving a new risky project. This is a, initially it's a 600 kilowatt power plant, but it's designed to be expandable to, to 1.2 megawatts. And this has been, and we have a long-term PPA with a large utility on Iceland, we also have a long-term lease agreement for the lab as so, and we're utilizing the resource with the local municipality on the fluid. And I think that this, and we're using local workforce and also global supplier. The house is built just two kilometers down the road from here. And I think this also adds a lot of value to it. To so utilize and have really great connection and work together with the local community to deploy this. We as a Swedish company would not be able to go to the municipality of Kluger and try to sell them a project like this. It needs to be done with, with the local people and, and in great cooperation to get them. So this is just another more picture from that project. This is another one. This is a small repower project in, in, in the US, uh, just a little bit more than an hour from here. We're also based on taking uh, part in it. Uh, and uh, sadly, it's now a bit of, we were hoping to get it up and running now in PRC, but because of the permitting delays that we since it's just a recall, just to clean the equipment. Otherwise, it's the same, but yeah. So we're on the other side of the board, we're in California, so yeah. But uh, it's going to be beautiful. And finally, hopefully, in the first quarter of next year, we can get it up and on. So, we're just then to summarize, I believe, or I believe that this is an important component for Geothermal to keep growing and for the geothermal market to expand and be even bigger. And I believe that this kind of fast deployment, partial deployment, so you can attract investors that normally are looking at a wind project that takes one year to develop or so. They don't want to wait five or seven years to uh, see the cash flow coming from their investment. I also believe in de-risking the project. And I believe this kind of distributed smaller system where you create more of a portfolio of 10 to 20 projects can help to lower the overall risk. And distribute the power closer to the consumer. I believe many times, sadly, that it's hard for normal people to connect with geothermal because of this more centralized industrial scale. Making it more, moving it closer to the consumer will also get the public attention to it in a better way as long as they don't have to listen to the cooling. Yeah. And collaboration is the key. We don't have all the answers. We have a, what we believe a technology that can make a big difference in your, your thermal industry, but we need all the knowledge we can get from the rest of the industry and all the learnings. We don't want to be doing this on our own. We want to work with the best of the rest of the industry to really accelerate.